Perfect. Yes, say yes, Father. Yes, yes. Yeah. Anyway, it begins with the prophet. And the prophet comes and God speaks to him and says, Listen, I want you to go and wait for me. And he had to get rid of all the distractions in his life and all the things that appeared to be of God before God spoke. And then he shut his mouth and he listened. And then as he listened and he found out what God wanted him to do, then he did it. That's what needs to happen on this weekend. Gentlemen, we are all leaders in this movement of working with men and bringing men to Jesus Christ. But often, as I'm going to be talking about tonight, we sit there and have let our ideas influence what God wants us to do. And that can be loud voices, that can be wind, that can be earthquakes, that can be all these things that we think, oh, this is where God is. And yet God speaks best in silence. He speaks loudest in silence. And that's why today and tomorrow we begin with the holy hour. And the holy hour is not for you just to get your rosary and that. And I'm like, oh, holy hour, Father, huh? Yeah, holy hour. You know what you're going to do? Shut up. You can do it. I do it every morning at 4.30. I'm in the church. Holy hour. And the important reality, why? Because if I'm going to sit there and speak God's word, I better shut my mouth and listen to God first so I speak his word and not my own. Because I have a big ego. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> and it's very hard to put the ego aside to do what God wants. And so if I don't shut up and say, okay, God, I'll do anything you want. I exist to please you. I am your slave. That means I must be a person who listens to God in prayer. And God speaks loudest in our silence. So after Mass, of course, we're going to do the Holy Hour. Tomorrow morning, we're going to do the Holy Hour. And again, often in these things, people think, oh, that's like an option. It's not an option. You must be here. If you don't, do, if you don't pray... Keep your mouth shut. You can't say a word this whole weekend. You understand? Because I don't want to hear from people who don't pray. I could care less what you think if you don't pray. It's just that simple. Because all it is is your opinion or my opinion. Again, there's I, when I do priest retreats, and I tell priests, I say, Fathers, you pray every day or leave the ministry. Period. Because we're not interested in a priest that doesn't pray. We're not interested in men leadership to lead the nation as men. Unless we men pray. Now the problem is, is sometimes when we're in leadership, we're busy about many things. We become like Martha, don't we? Because we have to make sure that this goes well, this goes well, that runs well. Who's going to do? We're in the background. The speakers are talking. We're on our phones in the back. We're doing there. What did the speakers say? Oh, I guess it was good. <laughs> That's too much Martha for us this weekend. We need to listen first. So what I encourage today is as the prophet, and the prophet is the one who speaks to the community, God's word, and you were all baptized what? Prophets. Priest, prophet, king. And as a prophet, we listen to God's word, and then we speak it to the community. We can't speak it to the community until we've listened to God's word. So what I encourage you tonight and tomorrow Especially as we begin tonight. You know, we got that booklet. We all say that booklet you got with all that stuff in it. And that's good. It was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of work to put that book together. But if God tells us to do something else, will we do something else? Yes. yes. Absolutely, positively. This isn't about any of us here. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's about doing what he wants us to do. So we have to come before him. And so today especially... What you and I got to do for the Holy Hour when we start our Holy Hour is, Lord, help me to listen. What is your vision, Jesus, for men's ministry in the United States? What is your vision? And then we need to be still and silent. And the Lord will start speaking to us. And then we bring that vision and we share it together. This is what the Lord said to me. Did he say it to you? And I'm just telling you, when the Spirit of God starts working through men, then what happens is God's going to speak to us the same vision. You know that. It'll be amazing. What did God say to you during the Holy Hour? He said that I have to keep my mouth shut first, and then he says we need to go and to do this or do that. And I'll bet you that the God of the universe will speak to us as one. If we open ourselves and we surrender to the spirit of the living God. Remember, at a Pentecost, there's a bunch of men who were afraid and thought about this is the way things are supposed to happen. And then when the Holy Spirit came upon them, 
They had power and they could go and change the world. Gentlemen, 12 men changed the world. Just 12. You know when Kevin, when we were doing this, he says, we have less than 100 people here. I go, shut up, we'll be fine. We're only be go, shut up. God can do it with 12. We have too many with 80. It's just too many guys here. Because we're all gonna start saying what we think's important here. It's important. But make sure that you and I, let's make a deal with our mouth. We keep it shut unless it comes from the Lord. And we listen to the Lord first. That's what the hour is about. So again, when we start tomorrow at the hour, and we start this whole night with the hour, it's not about just getting prayers in. Oh, I good, I have to say my rosary yet. That'll be good. Say it if you want. But make sure you have a listening heart. And then he'll use us as his men to be prophets to this nation if we begin with him and not with us. Got it? Got it. Get it? Got it. Gonna do it? Yes. May each you know his love today and forever. Amen. Or see if you're gonna do it. You said you would, so you don't lie to a priest to go to hell. <laughs>